Hey cruisers, we are at the Embassy Suites on 17th Street in Fort Lauderdale because today we are boarding Regal Princess. This is a very exciting cruise because we are actually taking Regal Princess from Florida all the way to Galveston on a Southern Caribbean 12 night cruise. Our goal for this video is to give you a bit of a vlog experience, but also some tips and tricks if you are going to be cruising on Regal Princess. So let me give you a little backstory here. We booked this cruise because my 50th birthday is on Halloween. So we wanted to do something special and a 12 night cruise really just allows us a little bit more time and space to relax. So that's really special. Also, we've recently relocated to Texas. So taking this ship home to Galveston just feels right. So we're really, really pumped up. Now, if you're considering the Embassy Suites in Fort Lauderdale, this is a great pre-cruise hotel. Most people find that it's a really good value and it just has some nice conveniences like an included evening reception with free cocktails. Let me see if I can get this door open. Oh, as I was saying, <laughs> there's an evening reception here that's included in your hotel price as well as complimentary breakfast. And a lot of people really enjoy that about this hotel. There's also a really nice tropical pool. They have some bar and food service out there. And it's just very, very conveniently located to both the airport and the cruise port. Now we have three resources that we think are gonna help you out so much if you're going on Regal Princess. And one of those is a, um, a Caribbean cruise packing list in our Amazon storefront. We're gonna go ahead and link to that down below. We also have a Caribbean packing do's and don'ts list for you. And if you do happen to be in Fort Lauderdale, which you may not because Regal's gonna be out of Galveston for a little while, we do have a review on the embassy suites here in Fort Lauderdale if you're interested. That is a website review that we're going to link to down below. So now, it is time to go get ourselves to the cruise port. We're actually going to Terminal 2 here in Fort Lauderdale. Now, there are several different ways you can get there. You can take a taxi cab, you can take a shuttle from the hotel, which does cost extra, or you can do what we're doing and choose ride share, which is like an Uber or a Lyft. So we're actually going to go do Uber and Lyft right now, and we'll see you there. Uber and Lyft is really easy to get from this hotel and very inexpensive. We got an XL, so we have plenty of room for all of our bags for about mm, somewhere between 11 and $13. And I think that is our Uber right here. Yep, that's him. <laughs> Well, sometimes it does not pay to get to the terminal early. That was the longest Uber ride I think we've ever done. It was literally like six blocks and it took us probably a half an hour. But this makes perfect sense because the ship is coming over from Europe, had to clear customs and arrived late. So all the passengers are getting off. If you're embarking in Texas, this probably has nothing to do with your experience. This is just our experience following a transatlantic here in Florida today. Boarding did take about two hours today because there was a Coast Guard drill. These things can happen and it's always best to be prepared for them. Pack some snacks, pack some water, wear comfortable shoes, pack a little bit of sunscreen. You just never know when there can be a delay. But we safely made it on the ship and the staff was really eager to make sure everybody was fed and happy once we got on board. We also were able to come directly to our stateroom. We booked a mini suite on this cruise and it's been a really gorgeous cabin. We'll show you around in just a moment, but wanted to just draw attention to a couple of things that I think are important for day one on Regal Princess. Number one, if you're traveling with children or teens, make sure that you head up to the youth center when you board, look at the schedule that's left in your stateroom and head up to make sure that you complete your registration, meet the staff and find out what the programming is like. Number two, make sure that you get the muster drill process over with. So you're going to want to watch the safety orientation or briefing on the television in your room or on your device in the medallion app, then head to your muster station and get kind of scanned in. The buffet on the ship is huge, expansive. You should have no problems finding something wonderful to eat on embarkation day, finding a place to sit either within the buffet 
or outside. We had a really nice lunch up there, really enjoyed it, but there are alternate dining venues for you if you choose. You could hit something down in the atrium or you can even go to the main dining room on your boarding day. So we have just ordered drinks to our room using the Ocean Now portion of the app and we are going to settle into our stateroom a little bit and then go hit the sail away party and tonight it's Sabatini's for dinner for an Italian feast on night one. Sounds pretty good to me. So the sail away party today was a little bit quiet and we think that is because of the late departure time. It's about 6.50 p.m. and we still haven't pulled away from the docks. I think there's just no real cue that we're sailing away. So it's fun up there. There's really great music. There's dancing. The, the team is up there, the entertainment team, and it's a lot of fun, but there wasn't really like a coordinated sail away party. I realized I forgot to tell you guys what our itinerary was. This is a really neat itinerary. It's a 12 night cruise from, as I mentioned, Fort Lauderdale to Galveston. It's kind of like a Caribbean island hopper. It's like a, a mix of almost the ABC islands and then a few other things. So here's where we're going. So we're doing Antigua, Aruba, Tortola, Curacao, and Cozumel. I think I got it. Five ports, six sea days, which is gonna be really super nice. Very relaxing, six sea days. So it's like the ABC islands minus the B, plus the British Virgin Islands because of Tortola, plus Cozumel. So the way that we're gonna be doing this is instead of vlogging every single day, we're gonna vlog some of the days, but we're gonna give you guys like a recap at the end of today's video that's like highlight reel of the whole trip. So you're definitely gonna wanna stay to the end to see that highlight reel. Okay, so the sailway party was quiet, so what do we do? We had some drinks delivered to the room using Ocean Now. We have Princess Premier on this voyage, which is great. If you do get Princess Premier, a tip for you, make sure that you note that you can actually get higher value cocktails, liquors, wines, things like that. So be aware of that and take advantage of that and take advantage of it on your first day. Now, before we head to Sabatini's for our night one Italian feast, I want to show you guys around the room, but I also want to tell you just a little bit more about Sabatini's. So as you know, Sabatini's is the Italian restaurant concept on Princess, and it's like a four course meal where you get starters and you get pastas, mains, and desserts. Big tip for you if you're cruising on Regal Princess, really, or any princess ship for that matter. You guys, specialty dining reservations on night one can sometimes be really easy to get. We actually felt like doing specialty tonight and we didn't have a reservation, so we called down and they're like, absolutely, what time do you wanna come? I don't think it's something people think about on night one. So just something for you to consider. I know sometimes you don't feel like you're maybe put together and ready, like we don't even have our luggage yet. We might have to go, I might have to go to, in jean shorts and like my husband's wearing sneakers, who knows? But who cares? They expect that on night one. So if you're ready to kind of get into the cruise mood, a little specialty dining on night one can be super awesome. Okay, now we're gonna show you around the cabin. We always do a full stateroom tour, so this is just a mini walkthrough of a mini suite on Regal Princess. We're on the marina deck, which I think is deck 15. Lido deck is deck 16, so we're one deck under the pool deck. Haven't had any issues with noise, and you know, there were like sail away party beats up there, so I think we would know if it was gonna be a problem. Seems like it's gonna be okay and if you're wondering about the view from the stateroom in terms of like the sea view bar and stuff not a problem it feels really super private and it's totally shaded can't show you the balcony because it's actually totally dark outside but let's take a quick look around starting with the sofa bed this is actually a couch that can convert into a relatively large bed we will see that all set up tonight and then continuing on over here, we have a really sizable storage table next to the sofa, which makes for excellent storage. Now over here, the good old fashioned, wonderful princess luxury bed, which if you have not experienced it, you guys, it's truly something to behold in the cruise industry. Now, more bedside tables here, but something that's very important for you to know, there's no power no AC power and no USB bedside. So just something good to know. I'm gonna flip you guys around over to this vanity, which is basically an enormous, kind of like a marble or quartz top desk. There's a refrigerator on this side, bank of drawers over here, storage over here. This is a wonderful, wonderful desk area. And the way that they designed this little shelf for extra storage up top, it's really genius. 
I forgot to mention two televisions in this room, one on this wall. And then if you pan around past this awesome privacy curtain, I love these, these are so cool. The second TV for the main bed is over here. Again, super cozy bed, two bedside tables, great little storage right here. And now I'm gonna take you in and show you the closet. Hopefully the motion sensor light is gonna come on. Let's try it. There's like a little motion light. Let's try it. Yes, it did it. <laughs> it worked. I love these little motion lights. They're cool. When you get up to go to the restroom in the night, this comes on. So that's maybe it's good or bad. It's good if you need a little extra light. It's bad if someone is sleeping with you is like a little light sensitive. Anyway, um, robes, slippers for everybody, plenty of storage, plenty of beautiful high quality wood hangers, which we do love. And voila, the storage, push button safe, lots of shelves. It's pretty awesome. And now we'll take you in and show you the restroom which is pretty great on um, Princess. Usually, you know, if you get a mini suite, you guys usually get a bathtub. And for us, we love that. Bathtubs for us are like a luxury item on a cruise and on a longer voyage, like 12 nights like this, it's gonna be so nice. So plenty of space, lots of storage right here and a beautiful tub shower combo with an adjustable shower head. They also have some of the traditional shower gel shampoo conditioner combo, but I strongly recommend for sure. Ladies, if you have long hair or if you're selective, bring your own shampoo and conditioner. These are fine, but you definitely need some conditioner. Okay, let's go to Sabatini's and have an Italian feast. Oh, you guys, dinner is a wrap. That was so good. Sabatini's is a really nice way to kick off your cruise. It's a four course meal. We didn't even make it to the dessert course. We are ready to call it a night. We want to show you just a few highlights from this cruise. Here's a little look at what is to come. Our first port stop was Tortola, where we took a Princess Shore excursion to Joost van Dyke. We'd heard such great things about it. Here we had a casual meal, swam in the ocean, and walked over to the Soggy Dollar Bar for a famous painkiller. Our next port stop, Antigua, was super rainy, so we took a short island tour with a friendly driver we met at the Antigua cruise port tent. Sadly, due to the weather, we didn't see too much, so we'll look forward to visiting when the weather is better another time. In Curaçao, we were amazed by how clean and walkable the immediate port area is. We started our day by walking over to the Queen Emma Bridge, the bridge is hinged and allows boats to pass through. We explored the gorgeous, colorful city and checked out the Punda heart structure. You just have to see this. Then we took a cab later in the afternoon over to Mambo Beach where we enjoyed some time in the calm water and watched the sunset. On our way back to the ship, we were greeted by local dancers and did a little bit of shopping right at the port. Our last stop was Cozumel, where we finally got to spend the day at Paradise Beach. The weather was once again drizzly, but that didn't stop us from enjoying some fun in the sun and delicious food and drinks. We can't wait to revisit the Southern Caribbean. Thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in. And make sure to subscribe, give us a like, comment with your questions. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye.